for Andrew Doak was there and joins us with more. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Doug. Yeah, Drew Brees was able to find his mojo a little too late against the Chiefs. He had an incredibly shaky start returning from injury. And Zion checked out of this game with 31 points, of course, a new career high, as well as nine rebounds and five assists. Only three other 19-year-olds have had a stat line like that at that age. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, and Luka Doncic. The Saints were down seven starters today, had a quarterback that's still on the mend after breaking almost half his ribs and two starting receivers missing this game against the Vikings. It was the perfect storm for Alvin Kamara to run for a record. It was almost unbelievable to process what he was able to do at his size and how nimble he was. And what's incredible going into this matchup is that LSU quarterback Joe Burrow is four touchdown passes away from the single season touchdown passes record. That's the most touches that Kamara has ever had in a game that ended in regulation. And how about this stat? When Kamara touches the ball 20 or more times on offense, the Saints all time are 8 and 0. Oh. Bryce Brown was very critical of his offense tonight. 19 points, their lowest scoring output of the season, and he was very hard on his sophomore quarterback, AJ Samuel. The LSU football team finally found a solution for their terrible defense this season. Just possess the ball a ridiculous amount of time, and then they won't have the opportunity to lose them the game. The Tigers controlled the ball against Arkansas today. A crazy 42 minutes. Arkansas only had the ball for 18 minutes in comparison. And despite thin numbers due to a recent COVID outbreak, Pig Suey came to play. Trailing by three, the Florida transfer, Felipe Franks, now slinging it for the Hogs. And the receivers left wide open. Keep happening. Traylon Burke, 65 yards. Arkansas up 7-3. to three. LSU's TJ Finley, a bounce back performance. 271 and two touchdowns. His first 30 yards to Racy McMath. LSU back in front by three. Speaking of double doubles, adding points from the pine. Josh Hart for three. 17 points and 13 rebounds. Hart was everywhere. Pell's up 43-41. New Orleans has needed some defense. Zion Williamson adding some on this play. The steal leading to the nice Inside roll here on the block, gets in the paint and jams it home. Williamson with 17, and the Pels back up by five. The Jaguars have cut running back Leonard Fournette. Cut, gone, out. The Jags parting ways with New Orleans' own Leonard Fournette just 13 days before the 2020 season and getting nothing in return for him remains one of the wildest stories of this year. And it probably changed Leonard Fournette's perspective. Jacksonville releasing Fournette was a part of a larger purge of their locker room, in which Duvall said goodbye to their most talented players, all because they said those players didn't fit their culture. When they caught him, he called me that morning. I said, what? I'm like, where did this come from? Like, what's going on? He didn't know. Nobody knew. At that time, Leonard's mother, Lori, told him something greater was on the horizon. So, you know, I kept reiterating to him, you know, I said, something's better out there. I said, you know, don't always look at the loss as a loss, because sometimes it's a game. And that's why a mother's wisdom is unmatched. Coming out of St. Aug, the hype train had already left the station for Fournette before he ever played it down at LSU. And after three incredible seasons with the Tigers, Fournette was the fourth overall pick. Nobody would have guessed he'd be out of a job after three seasons. Coming off his most productive rushing year with the Jags, all of a sudden, Fournette was one of the hottest commodities on the open market. But after signing with the Bucks, for the first time in his career, Fournette was a role player. Powers it in That's from the left side and in for the touchdown. We have to understand and recognize there was also something greater for me at the end. You know, prior that I wasn't getting the ball that I used to uh, with Shan Brown, with Rojo. It didn't matter, you know, uh, I had to, like I said, this, I think this, this season was a humbling season for me. And it wasn't until the back end of the season that he was able to display just how much talent he has left. That's because in three of his last five seasons, he's carried the ball a minimum of 265 times. This season, he's only carried it 97 attempts. And this postseason against the Saints, you could tell how much the lighter workload paid off. So much so that his teammates gave him the name Playoff Lenny. They've been calling Leonard Playoff Lenny. <laughs> what do you think about that nickname? Well, actually, my brother Gerard, he's passed away. When Leonard was four or five, he would call him Lenny. He hated it. <laughs> so he's embracing it now. 
Yeah, he, he likes it now, right? <laughs> yeah, he loves it now. <laughs> yeah. And Tampa loves it too. Andrew Doak, Eyewitness Sports. All right, Andrew, thank you. A nonprofit organization on the North Shore named Ski Dogs is helping those with disabilities carve it up on the water, something that many of them thought was never going to be something they were able to do. And today they spent the morning and afternoon outside of Bush, and it was a day to remember. For those of us that have spent a day on the lake, try to remember water skiing for the first time. The adrenaline rush you felt when the boat pulled you to the top of the surface, the water misting your face, and the wind blowing through your hair. But for those that deal with life-altering disabilities as well as their parents, many believe days like this might never exist. I did not. When I saw it, immediately I knew I needed to reach out to them. Ski Dogs specializes in adaptive water skiing for those with disabilities from almost every medical background paraplegics, amputees, spina bifida, or even traumatic brain injuries. And they also take kids with muscular dystrophy and Down syndrome. This is their ski, a seat perfectly placed on a ski-like surfboard, sandwiched in between two more skis for safety. And the entire time, helpers are following the rider like a hawk on sea dews just in case he or she falls off. And then once it gets on top of the water, David Thomas, who is the co-founder of the group, is paralyzed as well, which inspired this passion. After starting the organization in 2018, they put on three incredible events just like this every year. And it's a date so many look forward to for so many reasons. It's a hope of, you know, I don't have to just sit around the house or, uh, you know, watch TV all the time or, you know, something. It's, it gives you something to look forward to. Trenton Bradley was paralyzed after an ATV accident in Oklahoma in 2011, and Ski Dogs has become his outlet after first attending last fall. So I come in September, and it was it was just the most amazing experience I've had since you know my accident. And for others like Abby Ross, who was born with spina bifida, this was her way of breaking down mental barriers and bonding with her father, who also shares a love for the lake. I didn't wear a bathing suit for a really long time because I was afraid to show my braces and to show what I look like. So for him and I, this experience is more than just being out on the water and skiing. It's a confidence builder for me. But the truth is, an event like this does just as much for the moms and dads of those kids. You know, it's not just the, the, the look on the kids' faces, um, it's the look on the parents' faces. You know, we, we have the parents come in and they get so emotional seeing their child doing something that they never thought they'd see again. You see them when they leave and they might be a little apprehensive, they might have a little fear on their face, but when they come back, they have a smile on their face that you just can't get rid of.